Welcome viewers to another episode of ENC Question Reflection, where you learn truth, knowledge, and understanding. Today we're going to be talking about racism. Yes, that's more or less uh, one of those topics. But we are going to be talking about it today. So before I do um, go ahead and start, I do want to let you know, go ahead and remind you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the material that we drop. Also make sure that you like, comment, and share this video. Make sure that you comment and give me your feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Y'all be so quiet sometimes. I just want you to tell me how you feel. I ain't trying. You ain't going to offend me. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Guys, today we're going to be talking about racism. Like I said, racism is a very can be a very controversial topic. But I think everybody will pretty much agree when I say it is not something that's, that, is, that we're born with. It's not something that comes by nature. It's not something that, you know, you pop out of the room and you're like, yep, I don't like white people. Nope, I don't like black people. Nope, you know, whatever. You don't do that. So we're going to talk about that today. I have experienced this stuff myself, so I know I can speak on it. Um, if anybody has anything um, debatable they want to talk to me about or they feel like they want to tell me I'm wrong, go for it. I love the, I, I love to see you try. So, and I'm not being arrogant. I'm keeping it real. So, racism is not something that you just came out in the womb talking about you don't like a certain kind of people. It, it has come with years of stereotypical behavior. It has come with years of you hearing other people say and make comments about a specific um, race of, or color of people. I really don't believe in races. I believe in there's a human race because I'm scientific with it. But um, I don't even know where it started. I should research that. But it's really about culture. It's a cultural, it's a, a, an area of people. Um, like I've said before, if you go over to, um, if you go over in Africa, they'll tell you in a heartbeat, they, they don't look at, um, black American people as African people. They don't whatsoever. And they'll tell you that <laughs> you ain't African because they go by villages over there. You go over in Africa and they're like, oh, I'm from so-and-so village. I'm from this village. I'm from that village. You know, we're um, Nigerian, you know, we're for, we Egyptian, you know, Egypt, Egypt, people are like, oh, Egypt, I want to, Egypt is Africa. What, what, what did you think that was something different too? So people over here, they're born and they're American, but instantly they start that stereotypical stuff where, you know, they get around people that are like, oh, I don't, my, my daddy like, do like this. And so this is why we don't do like this. And then guess what? That's going to rub off on you because you're not born with it. If you put two different um, level of melanated people together and they were raised together you would have no idea that they that they were they didn't like it you wouldn't they would not like not like each other because they're raised with each other they don't see any difference it's just like people say oh well cats and dogs don't like each other yeah cat dogs do chase cats but if you have a, a, a cat um, and a dog that are raised together that dog, he might play with the cat, but he's not going to try to hurt it. He ain't going to try to... <laughs> That's the same thing, people. Same idea. Uh, I remember one time when I was I was a kid, my mom... Um, I stayed with my mom for a few months. She had this Komodo dragon. Not even exaggerating. It wasn't the really, really big ones, because I think those are in Australia. Um, but they're, they're really the, just the little ones. So it's like the miniatures. She called him Quasimodo because he, you know, it's whatever. Um, well, Komodo dragons, they eat meat. So, you know, you feed them like rats and stuff like that. And so one day we put a mouse, he was a little white mouse, little cute as he could be. And I remember being so upset because I knew he was going to eat him. I did not even want to go near the cage until he ate him. Because I didn't want to see that. I just didn't, you know, I'm just that kind of person. I just, I don't want to see people get hurt. I don't like that. And so, <laughs> come back. This white mouse was sitting on top of this darn um, Komodo dragon's head. Just sat there. Like, are you not going to eat it? And I'm sitting here, now, now I'm starting to root for like, are you going to eat it? Like, do you, are you hungry? And he sat there and I'm talking about, he just loved on that mouth he never ate it 
We put a different rat mouse in there. He ate that one. He would not eat this white one. For some reason, he, it was his friend. He befriended it. And it would sleep with him. It would sleep on top of his head, sleep on his bag, sleep on his... Like, it was crazy. It was awfully weird. And But you would think that... You would think that it would, it would go ahead and put its instincts in. It would like, I'm going to eat. I'm hungry. It didn't. A lot of animals that are born in captivity do the same thing. You know, you, you see a lot of them. They're like, I can't believe this person's touching this lion. You know, they, sometimes they get mauled by them because they do a dumb jump. But, you know, lions and stuff that are born and tigers, they're born in captivity. They're used to people. So they're not, their instincts are a little different. They're not, they're used to being around the human race. It's the same thing with human beings. But people are too much of morons to realize you're dumb as dirt. The animals get it. Like the animals, I mean, even in, even, um, you know, animal, animals might have ate, ate each other as a circle of life, but, you know, you might see a lion laid up with something like in the perfect world or something. And they talk about that, um, that the humans will be able to mingle with the animals, you know, when perfection comes or when the new system comes or when, you know, when the, you know, when we're dealt, we're, we're, we've done away with all this, um, evilness and uh, sinful world and things like that so um but but racism is something that you're teaching if, if your child let's say your child is racist is racist and they come home one day and they say hey i don't like um, this kind of people they learned that from somewhere they wasn't born that way so it could either be you doing something or maybe you're stereotyping a certain kind of people you might look at um you might look at you know, um, melanated people, and you just might be like, I do not like them kind of people. I'm the opposite. Um, I always was mad because when I was younger, um, I was in foster care. So I didn't even know that I was different until I started going to school. Like, I just, just me, you know. what? I wasn't even paying attention. As a child, you don't pay attention to the color of people like the, the, the shades that they are. You don't pay attention to that junk. You know, until you go to school and you get around other kids who um, are are exposed to stereotypical behaviors or, or, or are racist or who are prejudiced, you know, against certain things or, or whatever. Then you start seeing it, you know. And, and I remember feeling as a kid that back in when I was younger, Interracial relationships, um, interrelational marriages were looked down upon. Um, you know, the the when white people would braid their hair, it was just looked down upon. Like, you know, it was just it was looked on as disgusting. Well, I was like the complete opposite. I have never felt. I have never felt like I should be like that. I shouldn't. I've never. I've never felt um, racist whatsoever like you it's a it's like somebody's telling you something it's wrong that you shouldn't be doing or you don't need you need to stay away from them kind of people or you know people are will do that to you at, at a young age but inside you're just like no and I'm so hard-headed I am stubborn if I believe something I believe it and you it's gonna take a lot for you to change you better make some serious sense when you're coming to me and talking to me because just because you say something doesn't mean you're going to be able to change my mind. Sorry. I might say, okay, I can, I, I can see where you're coming from, but it doesn't mean I'm going to believe where you're coming from. Big difference. And so all my, all my life, you know, I was always, I was called everything. I'm not going to say what I was called on this, on this channel because it's very derogatory. Um, it'll make a lot of people mad and it's just disrespectful. Like, I wouldn't want, I just don't like hearing this stuff anyway. So to repeat it so you know where I'm, you get it. You get it. I have been called all kinds of stuff. Um, just because, just, just because of the culture that I took. It's not my fault. If you really, if, if you wanted to be in control of what I was doing, maybe you should have took care of me. You didn't, so get over it. But I've always felt like, you know, when people tell me you shouldn't be doing this, I've always felt like that was so wrong and I'm so hard-headed. <laughs> I'm so hard-headed to the point where I don't care what you say. I'm going to, if if I, want, if I wanted a melanated friend, oh, baby, I was going to have a melanated friend. If my best friend was my, 
I was raised like that anyways, but in foster care, I don't know if you guys know how it works, but sometimes you end up, you end up going to families and you come back and you go to families and then you come back and then you, it, it's ridiculous. It's like the worst thing in the world, but you'll go to a family, like one side of my family and they'll, they'll try to turn you against the other side of the family because they're a different color or because they're a different culture. And you're just, you just know it's wrong to judge people. And I wish more people were, would think the way that I thought, but we're in an imperfect world and it's just not going to happen like that. You know, people, people are not going to do that. You know, racism is definitely something that's taught. It's definitely something that people will try to put their beliefs into your head um, and they will stereotype. Now I'm going to tell you, coming from the culture and the background that I come from, it's a lot of melanated people out there that I don't feel sorry for. I'm sorry. I mean, just because my that's my culture, it doesn't mean I'm going to agree with everybody. Everybody walk up to me that's melanated and all of a sudden I'm going to be okay with what you're doing. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, thank you. Doesn't mean that I'm going to agree with you. You can be a completely rude, disrespectful, and indecent person. I'm going to tell you how it is. I don't care what color you are. I don't. I have no I have no remorse. I have no feeling for, for feeling like um, that person just does not deserve the utmost amount of respect. They deserve that bottom line level of respect where, hello, thank you, excuse me, but I don't have to tolerate you. I don't have to deal with you, and I don't have to, you don't have to be in my mix. I don't have to be around people like that, and I refuse to. But one thing I think a lot of people forget, and I'm not going to point any elbows, but one thing that people forget is the same kind of people that people will judge in our melanated culture. It's the same kind of people in them other cultures like that, too. That ain't just, that ain't just part of uh, our culture that, that, that people act a certain kind of way. It's all kind of walks of nature they act that kind of way. But see, that's where the stereotype starts. That's where, oh, they live, oh, they live in a trailer. They're trailer trash. Just that quick. I'm going to tell you one. I'm going to tell you a story about trailer. My grandma and my grandpa, my biological grandma and grandpa, they are um, almost 80 years old. And they have toned down a lot. They were kind of, you know, uppity. You know, they had these big houses, a couple of cars, three, four cars. You know, all through my life, that's what they had. Well, as they got older, they tried to tone down. You know, they tried to downsize because they're getting older. They, don't, they, can't, they just don't have the energy to take care of stuff like that no more. So... I was going to see her as they had moved to Florida and I was going to see my grandma and I'm expecting to pull up on like a big house. I like just trying to tell me where she lives at. I think I passed her house three times. She, <laughs> I'm driving past this house, this, this, on this street and I don't see, I don't, I don't see a, a, a double wide trailer. I think it's a trip. Well, they made it into a triple wide, but. I don't see it. I don't see a trailer on this side of the street. I passed a couple times. So finally my grandma came out and she was just like, it's right here. When I tell you this house does not look like a trailer, this house looks like a house. I'm like, this, what is this? Is that, a, is that a trailer? What is this? She's like, yes it is. It's a trailer. It's a trailer. And you can see, you know, where they double the line is up. But see, they, they fix it up the way that they do because they flipped houses the whole life. So, whatever. It looked really good. It looked really good. But it goes past that stereotype because the first thing you think when somebody lives in a trailer is, what? They live in a trailer? And you instantly stereotype them. And it's the same thing with racism. It's something that's taught. When that stereotype is in your mind and stuck in your head, anybody that lives in a trailer or anybody that lives in an apartment, you can't have a nice life living in an apartment because once you have a big family, you need to get into a house. This is stereotype. You can have a great life living in an apartment if you make it, you, you can um, make it your own. You can make it however you want to make it. I remember when me and Eric, we had been married probably two or three years. We got it. We were we moved into a trailer park. It was a quiet, nice trailer park because we don't live in. We don't now. We one thing we don't do because there are trailer parks that are very nasty, and I don't I don't do nasty because I had a little bit worse of an OCD problem than I have now. My 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 trailer was. Um, they used to use it to show people. I don't know why they did that, but um, they would show people. You know. The inside of our, our our trailer because when we went into this trailer this trailer was ugh. I'm extremely creative and I like to fix things I like to build things um, 
I literally just went through me and Eric. We just went through and remodeled a whole bunch of stuff in the house, but we did it. We we didn't pay anybody to do it. We did it ourselves because we're creative like that. So we go into this trailer, we fix it up, put carpet in it, paint walls, you know, fix up stuff, and they could not believe this trailer went from this to this. The owners loved it. They were just so happy. But see, I will, I, I will not accept living in in filth. Like, I'm not I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And um. So it's, an, it's just another stereotype out there. But these are things that we teach our kids. When we teach our kids that, our kids start to build those same stereotypes. And they start to build images of people. They start to think, oh, well, so-and-so kind of person that is. And, oh, I don't like, I, I don't like um, Mexicans. Why don't you like Mexicans? Why don't you like Puerto Ricans? Give me a reason why you don't like I don't know. I just I don't, I don't like them. You don't have a reason. You don't you don't like them because someone else told you that you shouldn't like them. You don't like oh I don't like Mexicans because they you know they 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 stated them. Well, I, well people don't understand about Mexicans and I cannot drill this into people's head enough. Mexicans are Indian tribes. They're they're in America now, but Mexicans live like Indians. People don't understand that. They say oh well they're Hispanics. No, they're Indians. They have a whole like v um, different kind of Indian tribes. Incas, um, the Aztecs. Like they have. A whole bunch of different kinds of tribes, just like America has Cherokees and Chippewa Indians and Sioux and Navajos. Like they're Indian tribes. It's straight up, straight up Tornado Alley or straight up, you know, where Mexico and Texas, and Missouri, Illinois, all that right there is just straight up Indian Indian tribes. Like that's just where most of them are at. When you get down to Florida, Florida was really Spaniard, you know, um, more Spaniard like um, Spain, Spain Spaniard, you know, Puerto Ricans are. It's a whole different world. But so when you say you don't like, oh, I don't like, you know, Mexicans because they stick to they stick to themselves. Yeah, they're villagers. They're tribal. You have to understand that. And if you don't understand that, of course you're going to be so quick because you don't know. You're ignorant. We're all born ignorant. We're born. We don't know squat. We don't know anything. You're quick to judge people because you don't know. But that's super ignorance. That's super ignorance to just, just to do something and it's real, really foolish to make a judgment call based on something you don't even know. You're assuming? I know you've all heard of what assuming does to you. I'm not going to say it, but you get it. You get it. But that's the problem with people is that racism is not something that we're born to do. You're not born to hate somebody or have a hatred for a specific race or culture of people. I don't like, again, I don't like the word race. A different culture of people. For what? Because your mama says she don't like them kind of people? Well, them kind of people might not like her kind of people. And then you, know, you, got, you got fusion. For what? For what? Shoot, if we started, if we wanted to start all this racism, but let's just, we can start, we, we, we can start, well, um, us women don't like other women who can't cook. We look down on women who can't cook. We look down on women who don't clean their house. Well, um, our kind of people, we look down on women who aren't submissive to their husbands and lose their men. We can do that all day long. Do we want to start that? That's stuff that's taught. But when we teach our children that that's not what we do, you don't dislike somebody. I don't, one of my, my kids, um, we're, we, we teach our kids to be clean people based on your smell. You can take a bath all you want to, but if you don't smell good, you're not clean. Okay. So my son comes up to me, he's probably second grade, and he's like, Mommy, this girl stinks. And I said, no, that's wrong. You shouldn't do that, Mommy, but she stinks. I know she don't take a bath. I can't sit next to her because she's think. I don't. I didn't know how to deal with that because I, all I all I could tell him to do is to be nice. As grown people, if you ever walked into an aisle and you walk by somebody who stinks, as a, as adults, we can control it. We can just be like and just walk past the stink. We know it stink. We know we smell it, but we just kind of just whatever and move past it. Kids don't. Kids will blast you to pieces. Kids will start that. What is that smell? Loud. So I didn't know how to deal with that one. How The only way I knew to deal with it was to let him just teach him, you know, well, sometimes we smell things that, you know, it doesn't mean you have to say it. You don't got to blast it out. You know, sometimes you never know what people are going through. You know, you just you just don't know. You don't know what kind of household she's having to deal with them. And I had, I had a kid in class one time call another boy, tell him he had roaches in his house. Man, when I tell you, I stopped that whole class because, you know, 
I told him, I said, does do you think he pays he pays rent? Do you think he can control where he lives when he's living with his parents? And he was like, no, ma'am. I said, okay, then. So it's not his fault if he got roaches. It's his parents' fault he got roaches. You know, it's, it's, it's not this little girl's fault if she smells bad. It's her parents' fault for not making sure she smells good. So uh, uh, as kids, we, we make it so, they make, they so quick to judge. They're so quick to, you know, and it's as parents, it's our job for, to correct this. Racism is not something they're born knowing. They don't just wake up crying and junk and just be like, I don't like people. They don't do that. They When they cry and they hungry, they don't poop, they peed, they sleepy, they ready for you to put them down, they want to be held, they do something. But it definitely ain't got nothing to do with, I don't like that person sitting in the room. I don't like them because they're, they're melanated. I don't like them because they're white. I don't like them because they're Chinese or, you know, I don't like them because babies don't do that. They're not gonna do that. They, they're, they're just you're just people. You're just people in their face. Get out of my face. But they're not doing it because they're racist. Racist is something that's taught. You teach children to hate other people. You teach you teach children to to base your judgment and base your decisions on the color of their skin or the culture that they're in. See, those are things you can't really control. You can't control how a person is raised. You can't control how, what color, what, how, what level melanin that, that they have. The only thing you can, that a person can control is their character. That's why Martin Luther King said that. And I know there's another reason he said this statement, but we're going to go back to the, the elementary part of it. When he said that, um, that, um, people won't be judged by the color of their skin, but their content of the character. When he said that, you have to understand that he doesn't want people to be judged by stuff they can't control, but to be judged by things that they can control and they're choosing to do your choice, your consequence. Racism does not start when you're a baby. It starts after you are being taught to do certain things. After you're being taught over and over and over again that, you know, when you give dirty looks to the same, to the same kind of people, kids pick up, kids are sponges, they pick up everything. So be careful what you do in front of your kids. If you don't want your child to grow up to be racist, then, I, like I had a lady one time tell me, she said, I wish my own, I wish my daughter would bring home a black man. That was her exact words. I wish my daughter would start dating and bring home a black man. So that kicked me in real quick. Cause I said, cause I'm educated, I'm an educator. So I'm not one of those that just be like, oh, no, you didn't just say that. You know, I always, I'm always one of those that make you think and reason and make you catch yourself up. So I said, okay, let me ask you a question. Now, she said a black man, right? Okay. So I said, what if your daughter brought home a man in a big white um, garbage bag? He's covered head to toe in a garbage bag. Dates him for a few months. I think I've told y'all this story before. Um, dates him, you like him, takes really good care of her, respectful to you, um, takes care of you sometimes. Um, how would that make you feel? She said, oh no, I would love that. I want my daughter to have some. Then she started to do, she's putting herself in a hole. She don't even know it. And she's just like, you know, I know I would love that. You know, he does this and he does that. And you know, that's the kind of person I want my daughter to have. You know, I want her to be happy and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. Now, what if one day he proposes to her and you say, yeah, I want you, you can marry her, yeah. And she, he takes that white bag off, a white trash bag off of his body and he's a black man. Now what you gonna do? She could not, when, she, when I tell you she stared through me, she couldn't answer my question. She couldn't. She's not gonna be able to answer my question because she based her decision off of racism, off of prejudice, off of stereotype. That's what she did. She didn't base it off of logic. She didn't base it off of character. She didn't base, no. She based it off of racism. That's taught. And not only that, but the fact that she has told her daughter, I wish she would bring home a black man. She literally has embedded racism in her daughter because now her daughter is going to be scared to, to, to marry or to date a, a melanated man because she doesn't want to disappoint mama. When I was a kid, I didn't give a goddamn what they said. Because I knew what I was supposed to be doing. And I knew where I was supposed to be. And I knew what I liked. And I, I, when I tell y'all, I was 
I'm still hard headed, but I'm not. I'm hard headed, but in a different way. I'm more prideful than hard headed. Um, I'm more. Um, if I believe something, I got a reason for believing it, and I'm gonna figure it out on my own. Just because you tell me to do something, if it doesn't make any sense, it does not mean I'm finna follow your advice. You can be 80 years old, it don't mean squat me. So that's kind of the hard headed kind of like I am now. But when I was younger, it was them trying to tell me that I can't um, grow up. You know, my foster parents is black, you know, so you're telling me I can't be with, but really? Okay, nope, I wasn't having it. So that they never was able to, and they tried. All three of my family member, family groups have tried. Um, they were all, they all didn't like my, my mom. Um, they didn't want me to be interracially um, mended. My my grandparents, um, my, my dad's side of the family, like none of them. They none of them wanted me to be um, doing that. And I was, and they, they were, well, you're rebellious. No, I'm not rebellious. It's not that I'm rebellious because you're telling me to be racist. It's that I don't believe in being racist. I don't believe in looking at somebody and saying, oh, well, you have this color of, uh, of skin, so I don't like you because I was never like that. This was never like that. And I wasn't tolerating it either. Trust me. If I told y'all some stories, they would ban me from YouTube. Just telling you. So I think I pretty much covered everything. I know normally I just try to do like 15 minute videos, but this one is skating on 30 and um, I really ain't on that. So look, with that being said, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and remind you again, if you have not done so already, to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button, y'all. Hit the notification bell and select all so you don't miss any of the material. Also, make sure that you hit that like button. We always forget to hit that like button. Hit the like button, share this video, comment on this video. Yes, please. Do not be scared to tell me how you feel. Go ahead. Put it in the comments. I don't care. You ain't finna pay me. True. I like it. Um, and also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The links are right above me as you see them here. Um, so go ahead and check those out. If you want to donate to keep our channel moving, you can donate on our cash app at ENC Question Reflection. So look, y'all, with that being said, y'all, we're going to catch y'all on the flip side.